Welcome to the Compact Collective. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Power Rankings episode of the Combot Collective, uh, covering the second week of the BattleBots regular season after episode two here. Uh, I'm Sterling Brown here with my co-host, as usual, um, our U.S. correspondent, Pori Nog, and our U.K. correspondent, Mr. Redman. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. Thank you, Quip. Doing good. Doing good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm hanging in there. Uh, very interesting episode this week. Uh I wouldn't say it was as good as uh, our premiere episode, but it's always hard to top the premiere episode. There were quite a lot of uh, quick KOs and quickly decided fights this week, but uh, that just sort of comes with the game of Robot Combat. What did you guys think about the episode this week? Uh, I thought that the episode was... uh, I thought it was pretty good, but in my eyes, uh, it was very one-sided in terms of uh, the combat in the draws. Yeah, Uh, Especially if 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 you watch the episode between, like, you know... Uh, when they showed the fight card, you notice that, like, I think pretty much 80 to 90 percent of all the robots that were fighting uh, at that one were on the right side of the fight card. Oh, wow, were they really? Yeah, if, if, I, I think if you go I, back to it, you can probably see it. Yeah, I think. I, I, but, man. Yeah. And then, that was the side Whiplash was on, so that's fair. But, uh, yeah, it was a very interesting episode. The fight with Whiplash definitely did, uh, go the way i sort of was expecting it to go but we'll get more on that in our uh, breakdown episode that we'll see later in the week uh very yeah very one-sided episode though but um do look forward to this uh, upcoming episode of course we'll be doing predictions for that probably either later today or tomorrow on our youtube channel and in our podcast networks but um uh before we head into our uh News for this section, we will say, um, if you're enjoying what we're doing here, um, please feel free to follow us on our uh, Facebook or on our Instagram and join our Discord channel, which you can find on our social media pages. And if you want to catch the audio version of these shows, you can find our podcast networks on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible, and anywhere you can find your podcast shows. Now, uh, let's get into the news here. Moving on to the news here, we do not know when the episode one uh, content will be out, hopefully on podcasts fairly soon. But uh, to catch you up on that, we do have some, we had two pieces of news last week. The first, of course, coming out of Robot Ruckus in Orlando that uh, they're doing an event this year, late January, um, a heavyweight event featuring some robots like uh, Gruff, Kraken, Extinguisher, Piranha, and uh, a new heavyweight called Bushhog. And uh, this event's going to be at the South Florida Fair. We do not know the format of this event yet, so we don't do not know if we're going to be covering it just yet. But we also have some news coming out of Perfect Phoenix from Virginia. They will not be participating in the 2021 BattleBots regular season or the playoffs, of course, um, due to school commitments for Team Captain Tyler Negan. But in the good news, they will be participating in the BattleBots bounty tournaments at the end of the season. And uh, we do have some scoops that there will be other robots like that also in that format, uh, but we do not know who, and we don't want to elaborate too much on that yet until we get the proper news on that. Uh, but moving on to this week's news, and uh, what's going on this year, some, a bit of drama coming out of the Hardcore Robotics camp. Uh, we have an interesting uh, Facebook comment coming from Rick Russ. We have Pori here, who can read better than me, for because I'm awful at reading online. I must have dyslexia. Um, uh, no, mate, reading... I, don't, I, don't, I don't blame you for this, for this text. This is a rough Jesus. one. We had to do tryouts for this. But uh, we love Rick Russ, but here we go, Pori. Uh, quoting what Rick Russ has said, we'll put this on the screen here. I disagree with all of the comments, and the reason why is that I have been crew chief of Tombstone for 12 years. Yes, there have been many changes, but the latest design was designed and built by me in my shop, with the exception of the new blades and the change to the lipos. The failures were the blades breaking and setting the lipos on fire. The frame took no damage at all, including my newly designed ME0708 weapon mover. I understand that you all think that Ray built and designed Tombstone. But for the past five years, P- Tombstone was redesigned, built, and maintained by me while Ray got all the credit. So that is why after filming the 2021 season, I decided to leave Team Hardcore slash Tombstone and start my own Team Swamp Thing for the 2022 season. And then uh, a couple days How's later, it? Ray Billings decided to retort with a... Uh... 
this comment right here, which I'll have an attempt to read here. I'm not going to go too deep into this. There are pieces that are factually incorrect, like he did all the work or he did all the design, or both of which are just bananas. But then there are pieces that are just feelings. He feels like there are he feels like he didn't get enough credit. You can tell someone you can tell someone that they, they don't know what they feel. I've never had anything other than positive things to say about Rick, both on and off camera. But at the, but the end of the race they'll interview Dale Earnhardt Jr. and not interview the pick chief, no matter how important everyone is in the competitive process. And I can't fix that for Rick. Rick is obviously a little salty over all this and wants to do his own thing. We are on the team and are supportive. We on the team are supportive of that, of course. I sincerely wish him the best. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he'll have something interesting and competitive to show off for his efforts next season. And no matter how he may feel going forward, I will be cheering for any successes he may have. So Ray Billings trying to come off pretty peaceful about it, which is good. Uh, looks like Rick Russ is taking Swamp Thing away, um, a robot that's always been affiliated with Hardcore Robotics, even going back to when it was known as Great Pumpkin, fighting on killer robots on uh, the Science Channel back in 2011. Uh, what, is our, what's our, what are our thoughts on their situation? This is a very interesting thing brewing up here. Um, I mean, it's very interesting that this is happening. And even, well, you know what I think is even more interesting? The fact that just like a week ago, you posted that video that was talking about... Nice. Uh, Rick Russ losing a tombstone like he probably saw that and he's like wow that's the first time someone's given me credit for building tombstone in the past five years right I just put him as a... I feel like he either saw him was like oh yeah or he saw he was like oh man because here I was posing these two bots he worked on getting blown up by Shredderator but uh no nah, Rick Russ is always awesome I've always loved that store's design I had a chance to yeah. tell him that personally back in 2019 as well when I went to a uh, battle bot so it was cool to uh Get to see him That's take a little bit of a stand on his own. I don't know what's going on with Hardcore Robotics because I've always known Rick Hard, uh, Rick Hardcore, <laughs> Ray Billings, Rick Hardcore, Rick Hardcore, Rick Hardcore. Rick Hardcore. Ray Billings. <laughs> you know, I, another thing. You know, if you allow me to get into Pyro's uh, conspiracy theory territory, what if like Rick Russ's design just like is something that Battlebots normally wouldn't accept because it's like you know another vert. So they just, oh, like, man. pretended to suck. have beef on the internet, to, like, so that they get in, so they could, like, build up the narrative honestly, of them, like, I, rivaling. I, 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 I theorized that a little bit when this was first announced, that this was, might just be a little something to spice up for, like, a round one fight. But now that Ray Bones has replied to it, I don't know what's going on. It's a little bit iffy. Uh, but I hope there's no real beef between them, of course. I know these guys have been friends for a really long time. You hate to see it, but, uh... <clears throat> mm. It's nah, all, I'm all for Rick Russ. I cheer for Swamp yeah. Thing over his tombstone. I'm a big Rick Russ guy. Yeah, I, I, I think the new Ray. robot. Yeah. yeah, I think the new robot is just going to be like Swamp Thing with an angle grinder, just gap taped on the top, and just be submitted into the next season. Yeah, well, but I, mean, I, th I, I think it'd be, yeah, I, I think it'd be quite funny though, just to, uh, if the fight happens between Tombstone versus Swamp Thing in 2022, because I'm feeling it's going to be Swamp Thing that's going to be entered in it. And I think so. the, uh, on the first, yeah, on the first hit, something just dies. It's just like, oh, Jesus no, like the Ragnarok and uh, Monsoon story all over again. Yeah, exactly. Oh, they uh, I, rivalries. Yeah, it's it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting though. Um, I wish that Rick Russ uh, designed his paragraphs better than his uh, machines. Oh, it's all Not good. a full stop in sight in that comment. Not a comma in sight there's either. There's, there's, a, on there's a comma. There's one comma. There's oh, yeah, comma. there's at least one. We can give him at least one. We appreciate that. One point. Hope Rick is doing well. But, man, <laughs> he was passionate enough. He forgot his full stops. Yeah, that's definitely a sign of a guy passionately tapping on his phone. And I can feel it. You know, you want to show off your value and your words. I'm curious now because uh, Rick Russ was, of course, such a key part to uh, the Ray Billings uh, team. What uh, what both guys are gonna do in terms of crew now for next year, uh, for twenty twenty two? Because Rick Ross has got to get his own slew of people, and uh, Ray 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 Bones has got to fill the void. Apparently, Rick Russell was the yeah. one that designed that entire weapon system on uh, Tombstone, which I I think we yeah. knew that already, but it really wasn't widely known. Yeah, totally. I that's one thing. Me and Green were talking about that the other day. Like, without Rick Russ, is Tombstone gonna like? struggle more now you know like because he he might very well be like the backbone of the team you know and what's yeah. ray gonna do i mean i'm sure ray will find someone but like who's to say that tombstone is gonna be as you know destructive next season you know yeah yeah we'll struggle yeah struggle more than it already is i think this season it's already meeting its match yeah it's really it's starting to catch up to the meta and it's fascinating because when uh 
Because we've known about this Vert Swamp thing for a little while now. They made the website for just a couple months ago. Which also makes me wonder how long this has been brewing. You know what I mean? Because this, that, that, that website went up, like, September. He was planning to leave before, like, it was going to happen. Are you, you, you saying that? Is, oh, is that a controversy? Yeah. Is there a, uh, a plot hatching behind the scenes that's coming to fruition now? Yeah. Hopefully it pays off, because <laughs> if something goes 0-4... Man, I hope not. I'm cheering for Swamp Thing. It might even be on the big dogs, that King of Draft team next year. Uh, but I, I, I was fascinated because when they first announced that, I thought, because remember, like, back in 2015 or maybe even 2017, I forgot when it was, Ray Billings posted a picture of that big vert that he had. It looked like a classic 120, whatever, 80-pound chunk of metal um, shaped like a classic vert. And I thought, oh, that's probably going to be what Swamp Thing will use. But now uh, it's completely different. I do wonder if it's going to be – if it's even going to be the Swamp Thing that Ray Billings has, you know, this is going to be a completely brand new Swamp Thing. And uh, how the whole name transition process worked out. And it is a very fascinating um, situation. We'll probably talk a lot more about Swamp Thing coming into the 2022 season when we uh, start bringing up uh, upcoming newcomers that we might see in the new season. But it's very fascinating what's going on here. Jumping now into the heart of the video here, we're talking about this week's BattleBots Power Rankings coming from the Combat Collective and our personal Power Rankings from us three here. Uh, of course, if you didn't see the Power Rankings from last week due to the absence of the video, our number one was Sawblaze, number two, Uppercut, number three, Shredder, number four, Deep Six, number five, Endgame, number six, Jackpot, number seven, Blacksmith, number eight, Free Shipping, number nine, Gruff, and number ten, Minotaur. Of course, Minotaur and free shipping, probably the only two losing record robots we will see on the power rankings list all here. Uh, very fascinating situation for them. Of course, now we have uh, of course, eight, a slew of eight new winners entering this potential chance to be on this list uh, this week. Um, of course, it'll be interesting to see who stays, so let's not waste any time and jump into this week's power rankings right here. As we start up our list here, we look at number 10. Uh, of course, coming out of Maryland here, it was a very fascinating situation and a result I don't think any of us expected coming out of this fight here. We knew it was going to be a very interesting matchup between two big bots, but Mammoth, kept by Ricky Williams and his um, consistent team with a very consistent robot, getting its third straight win in three seasons for his first fight. Um, an impressive knockout here on Hijinx. Uh, Absolutely good run here by uh, Mammoth. They, they they took control. It was a perfect uh, defensive situation here for Mammoth. They uh, they had their hands right, right on um, hijinks from the get-go. Like I said, it was a perfect fit. The way the wheels slid into the hockey stick setups here. Um, just absolutely all good all-around control here. And a good start by Mammoth. They showed their durability. They apparently took one really nasty, gnarly hit uh, from hijinks to their right front frame. So uh, they looked really good here, and uh, they managed to uh, throw Ijinx over. They ended up a little low on the list here, of course, because I don't think it was completely their fault um, how that Ijinx knockout happened. Of course, there was a, a loose bolt, a bit of an oversight on the Ijinx design, but they did look really good here as uh, we now move on to our number nine. Moving forward here, talk about our number nine. This is a robot I don't think any of us expected to see. Um, this low in our power rankings race, no matter how well it did um, during its first fight here in week one of the regular season. But uh, here we have Endgame here, sitting at the number nine position, our defending Battle Boss champion. I mean, sure, it did defeat Hydra, but ended up being ranked fairly low here, despite the fact it did get a win such a, such a major opponent due to both robots having such major issues with ground clearance. Of course, Hydra having the speed controller issue, which caused the explosion within it. And uh, Endgame trying out the long fork setup. And uh, eating it pretty badly, catching itself on the kill saws everywhere, um, taking every turn it went. It was a very sloppy main event and a fight that ended up getting uh, a bit too much hype for what it ended up being. But uh, that's just sort of what comes down in battle bots. Yeah, I, you have to imagine Endgame's going to shoot up this list sooner rather than later. It might end up falling off the list though next week when we get our next batch of round one winners coming out of this next fight card with bots like Black Dragon and... Um, Hypershock on the card, but uh, for the meantime, you know, it, it's just a bit surprising to see Endgame in this spot, despite the fact that, of course, every robot has their um, week one troubles. Even in even in success, we see bots like Mad Cat are having to weld their gears together and things in like of that nature. But um, very fascinating setup here with Endgame. We uh, well, obviously will end up seeing them go up the list unless we don't. And now we have our second robot returning here from week one's power rankings coming from four all the way down to number nine unfortunately 
due to the new field of robots, but still a very impressive performance coming from Team Overboard in Deep Six out of Week One. And I don't think anybody has forgotten the absolute whipping it brought to Pain Train that very first fight. Obviously, Pain Train might maybe not the most experienced robot, maybe the most notable robot that you want to talk about, um, being your first round opponent, but absolutely handily done by Deep Six, and they showed off that their uh, stability system and their stream mech both work absolutely fantastically. Um, very little to no reliability issues. A little bit of smoke coming out of the side wheel at one point during the fight, but besides that. Deep Six looked absolutely fantastic during this fight. Huge destruction of Pain Train. Um, destruction you can only compare to really uh, probably what Yeti took in Week 2 here recently against Mad Catter. Great performance by uh, Deep Six and the team here. As uh, They keep this spot, probably won't keep it for next week, but uh, very interested to see who Deep Six draws next throughout the BattleBot season. Coming in now at number eight, um, a robot from week two here, a robot that we recently saw fight in what had to have been the most spectacular fight of the second week, second episode of BattleBots. Of course, coming from the Midway Major, the Florida Bot Battle, Rotator versus Kraken, the winner, Rotator, on a judge's decision. It, it started off a little shaky for Rotator, which is probably why it ended up so low on the list here, but um, came back ultimately pretty dang well. Ripped apart that uh, Kraken wheel. To absolutely gutted gum brought brought a crack into its gums that's the best way you can put it brought crack into its gums there ripped both the teeth out ripped all the little smaller upper teeth out apologize to anyone who did the drinking game because that's a lot of teeth to get ripped out um hopefully y'all didn't take a sip for every single one of those little decorative teeth but if you did uh good on you but uh no in all seriousness absolutely impressive from uh Rotator, of course, also ripping out the uh, crushing system, the pneumatic crushing system of Hydra with that beautiful impact, probably the most powerful impact we've seen all season so far. Kenny said it at best himself. You could feel that impact from the heart. Um, you can see the explosion. You always loved a good explosion in the battle bots. So that's what we got out of that impact. Very impressive run from Rotator, managing to even beat the judge's decision, both him and Al Kindle. Getting over a little bit of a curse there, but Rotator are having this big issue. They can't seem to get knockouts on their opponents ever, and that's probably one of those things adding up in a situation like this. I bet we see Rotator go up in the rankings if they keep fighting like this, though. Absolutely a fantastic run by Victor Soto and the rest of the Team Revolution group. Another destructive showing coming out of Week 2 from a very bombastic group. California's Community College team, Team Bad Kitty. Uh, we've seen these guys, of course, in China now, and they've really made their mark in BattleBots lately. Amazing 2020 season, starting up 2021 just as good with this brand new, fantastic version of Bad Kitty that absolutely laid it out to the legendary Yeti who came out of retirement with a brand new design of their own system. Um, you know, busted the belts on Yeti in the first hit, um, eventually took out the entire drone system, ripped apart the back panel of the armor, ripped off one of the wheels, Yeti is known to be durable, and even this new version ended up being pretty durable. Yeti probably one of the better losers of this week, but uh, Mad Catter ended up showing it up. It was an absolute ass kicking for Mad Catter, to put it lightly, uh, after Yeti quit fighting it off. Just brutal hits all around. Mad Catter looked absolutely fantastic, and this was all during apparently some big issues with Mad Catter with um, their uh, drive system. They eventually had to weld... Uh, couple things together to get their drive system working perfectly and well perfectly enough good enough i should say and uh, by the end of the fight apparently they couldn't even turn one way and they couldn't drive as fast as they could had some big issues but you certainly cannot tell it from how they did mark mason and mad catter calvin eba of course one of the best drivers on the west coast maybe even in all the united states or the world recent norwalk havoc finals winner fantastic group here i can't wait to see more of mad catter here later on in the BattleBot season and now our third straight robot from the second week of BattleBots here making our list. It's surprising to see Blip not making a list, but I guess it came from not having that strong of an opponent. Pretty easy win, round one win for Blip. Tantrum, not as much as you can say. Uh, Malice, definitely very impressive in the top 32 last year. Very impressive in the bounty competitions. Really, really good rookie season all around. Probably should have been considered more seriously for rookie of the year. Uh, Tantrum absolutely laid it out. Brought the blackout to rolling blackout in the very first hit and uh, kept it on after that. It was just strike after strike after strike. Even showing a bit of sportsmanship, keeping uh, Malice alive and just wailing it on for half a fight further. Even though it was a judge's decision, 
you can see how Tantrum ended up where it did right here. Absolutely fantastic run by uh, the brand new uh, captains. That's another big thing. Alex Smith and Ginger Schmidt uh, co captaining Tantrum while Aaron Hill now runs Blip, of course. You can't even tell from how these guys were running. It was a well oiled machine. Just strike after strike after strike. The, day, the team did talk about, though, before the season that the, the big priority this year was fixing the weapon reliability, making sure it worked. And uh, both things, both the puncher and the vertical spinner, ended up dying out gradually around the end of the fight. Something they definitely need to work on, but first round issues are no uh, new thing for any BattleBots team, really. So I'm sure this is something we'll see fixed very quickly, and hopefully we'll see Tantrum in a main event very soon. I feel like they're a team that really deserves a main event opportunity. Get them on one of the main event shirts, BattleBots. We would all be very happy to see something like that. Things starting to look a little bit more familiar here as we approach number four. Uh, talking about Uppercut, the MIT fan favorite. Looking very fantastic in its um, battle against Gigabyte last week. I still had Uppercut as my number one on my BattleBots list for this week because I'm just... I really did think Gigabyte was going to be one of those top five robots we see having a chance to win BattleBots this year. And Uppercut handled them handily. Uh, it was sounding goofy to say, but alas. Um, it was nearly under a minute, and they just kept him in the corner. Obviously, there was a bit of good luck there um, with Gigabyte not backing up and not really going into the corner, but Uppercut still handled it very well. Two beautiful hits from uh, Uppercut to Gigabyte that really solidified the fight, shut down the system. Uh, apparently, it, even, it literally went through the shell of Gigabyte, which is not an easy task to handle. Um, very impressive run by Alex Torrey and the rest of the Uppercut crew. Um, of course, moving on, we know they're likely going to be facing free shipping in their next fight, so we're likely going to see them sailing along here and probably staying in this power ranking list all the way until the end of the regular season. I imagine unless someone tries stopping them. Uh, we know Uppercut's very powerful. They have two weapons on standby. That classic vertical bar spinner has been doing so many wonders for them moving on through this event, and uh, probably will as we now go on to our top three here. Coming in at number three, a robot I personally had on number two on my power ranking list is Whiplash, who just, I had a feeling it was going to really, it was going to stomp through Bloodsport fairly easily just due to the weapon style matchup that they were facing and the elements of the upper deck. And all that ended up being a factor just like I was thinking it would. Um, of course, Whiplash with its brand new multi-fork plow setup, just adding on to the setup more and more each year, making it better and better. Fast Electric Robots, one of the best teams when it comes to stuff like that. Just took full control of uh, Bloodsport for pretty much the duration of the fight. Only a few uh, real good gashes to the sides of the plow. Other than that, just taking full control of the robot, even apparently ripping off of one of the wheels of Bloodsport through the chaos of everything. So that's very impressive, or at least it's higher of Bloodsport, I should say. Matthew Vasquez calling his shot. Saying, oh, I'm going to put Web Sport on the upper deck for sure. We're here to make use of that. We think that's the big thing that's going to get us ahead in BattleBots. And what do they do? They get their first upper deck KO of the BattleBots season. So, I mean, you know, I doubt Whiplash is going to leave the top five anytime soon like a lot of these robots we have up here. It's a very impressive robot. It's clearly dominant, and it's always been one of the top three robots likely to win the championship for the past three years and likely continue to will until it inevitably does Whiplash. Such a powerful robot as now we go to our top two right here. A bit of an interesting situation here. Even though it hasn't fought at all during the entire seven-day span since we last see it, saw a fight, of course, for obvious reasons. It's only been one episode. Captain Shredder has moved up a spot in our power rankings list. Now sitting at number two. Um... Very impressive season, though, for it so far, of course, with the only fight we've seen of it. Yeah, it's still the biggest upset of the season. Probably still the biggest moment of the BattleBots season. We know uh, Brian Nave and Nick Nave, great friends of TCC. Um, they've always been a formidable team. They've been around for a while, finally getting their flowers after what's been a bit of a lull since they're coming out of retirement in 2014. Um, only four career wins since um, their return at the STEM Tech Olympiad in 2014, where they went 0-2 with the original Shred Raider. Uh, this is their biggest one since, obviously. And a huge knockout on Tombstone. They made it look easy. They barely took any damage at all, besides the fact they turned they uh, feel safe their weapons, so they didn't completely break down. But uh, no, they looked absolutely fantastic during this showing, and uh, 
That, that's for the first time in a while. People are really rating Shredder fairly high. Some people are even saying that this is an upper B tier robot. I don't know if I get that far. It's still a very classic design. A lot of history behind this robot, of course. One of the most feared robots in the mid 2000s, but uh, still kind of finding its place in the in this modern era of robot combat, even with the stuff it's done in China. I look forward to seeing though what it does in the future rounds. It'll be interesting to see who gets challenged up against next. I don't know. I feel like um, you should put it against a good vertical spinner now that you put it against a top horizontal spinner. Mix up Shredder's schedule, but uh, only time will tell for this team. And now, capping it off at number one, more things change, the more they stay the same, as we now have our second straight number one here, as Sawblaze continues to hold the spot with its very impressive judges' decision victory against Minotaur last week. Um, in just seconds, within, within seconds of the fight, after taking those two strong hits from Minotaur, Sawblaze showed its durability by flipping Minotaur over, exposing the underbelly of the machine, and just laying those two absolutely visceral strikes on the drum spinner of Minotaur. Uh, I mean, really on the body Minotaur, the drum spinner Minotaur. You know what I mean. My apologies. Just saying things to say things. Ugh. But uh, I digress. Talk, talking about Sawblaze here, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see who they put against it after such a dominant performance against a returning robot that had oceans of hype around it. Sawblaze now 3-0, and opening the season its past three appearances. 4-0 um, in its last three opening appearances overall. You know, wins over Overhaul, wins over Rotator, wins over uh, Whiplash, and now a win over Minotaur. It just gets bigger every season. It's very fascinating to see who Sawblaze ends up getting next, though. Like I said, has to be a main event performance, um, and I think they really deserve someone big time like Endgame or even Hydra. Uh, maybe even rematch with Tombstone, something exciting like that. Maybe a rubber match with Witch Doctor. It'll be fascinating to see what they end up doing with Sawblaze. But Jameson Go, one of the most dominant drivers in the world right now. We know what he's doing with Norwalk Havoc, with bots like Silent X and Silent Spring, with bots like Tuscan Raider, even dominating the sportsman scene in the small boss class. Sawblaze, probably the best hammer saw in the world right now out of any weight class, just, especially the most recognizable. Um, got the toy right there. So, you know, that's just how it would be. He's just marketable beautiful machine you love the green flame and yeah sawblaze number one for back-to-back -back weeks here with the combat collective so capping it up here as now you can now see there's our full uh top 10 here for the combat collectives tcc 10 coming to the second week of battle bots of course a lot could change as we enter this next week we got bots like ice wave black dragon slamo hypershock cobalt fusion lockjaw copperhead you know, at least a handful of those robots are going to be entering our list, and we'll be talking about them next week. But uh, in the meantime, very interesting to see where Endgame has ended up. Very interesting to see how it's about even 50-50 in terms of robots coming out and robots coming into the list. Um, congratulations to Sawblaze for holding the number one spot. Congratulations to uh, Captain Shredder for somehow moving up a position despite doing absolutely nothing. Um, interesting how our votes ended up working like that. But um, yeah, there we go. Uh, our second TCC 10, you can expect more power rankings from the full heavyweight division and battle bots in the near future. Uh, and of course, after this video, you can expect our episode 3 predictions video and our episode 2 breakdown video coming in the coming up this week. Uh, this has been Sterling Brown here at the Combot Collective. You, of course, heard Mr. Redman and Porinog talking in our news section here. Um, you can, of course, find Mr. Redman at joshuagunnett.com and find his YouTube channel. Uh, page of the same name joshua gunnett and you can find pori nog on his youtube channel www.porinog.xyz you can find both those channels in the description below um this has been sterling brown of course you can find me at sterling txtg on instagram find me in future projects this year which you'll see coming soon the outro music you hear right now so our team members settling thank you so much and we will see you next time here at the combo collection this was the Combat Collective. Find us on Instagram and Discord.